what really gets my dick hard is So fucking what? Welcome to Middle Up Your Podcast. I'm Ethan Luck. And I'm Clint Wells. This is episode 53, and we haven't done a top 10 in a while, so what better time than now? There's no better time. Just in time for the holidays. Oh Man. Just curl up by the fire and listen to us read a top 10 list. Who doesn't love a top 10 next to the fire, right next to the Christmas tree? And You know, this is an early Christmas gift to our listeners, I think. <laughs> I like to think of us as two metal Santa Clauses. Yeah. Hail Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Santa. Uh, I've been going through, we're making this compilation best of for the first year and I've been, a lot of fans are helping us do it, which is really cool, but I've been doing a lot of it myself too. And I'm at about, I don't know, 15 hours of listening to us <laughs> talk, but I did go back and listen to uh, our first top 10, yeah, our top 10 songs and our top 10 deep cuts. And it was interesting to hear how my, if I were to make that list today, there would be some changes. We've talked about that on every top 10 that like, this will be like a, a changing thing as time goes on. You know, it's just your taste change, your mood changes, you know, like I would guarantee that my top 10 list of those would change right now. Yeah. Uh, well, and just, I've listened to Metallica every day for an entire year. <laughs> I got in the car today to go run an errand and then come over here to, we're at, we're at HQ two, by the way. And, um, I, I open my phone to put some music on and I always just like scroll my thumb down to the M's yeah, every time. For sure. And I, for some reason today I was like, you know what? I'm going to not listen to Metallica for one day I'm of give the myself year. a break. <laughs> Although I was listening to Metallica all morning at home. So right. yeah, no, I'm not off the hook. Well, if you're just now joining us and maybe this is my, your first time you've ever heard of us, we're an all Metallica podcast. Ethan and I are two touring musicians get together once a week to talk about all of our favorite metal band, the mighty Metallica. Yep. Uh, and so that's kind of who we are. That's who we are. Now you know. Now you know. Good so, and goodbye. Yeah, well, that, this has been episode 53. <laughs> while you're laying there next to your Christmas tree by the fire, now you know who we are. So you, you don't have to feel uncomfortable while listening to us <laughs> laying down. Before we get into our top tens, we're going to blow through the stuff we always do at the top. We're doing this iTunes contest. So uh, if you go leave us a positive review at iTunes, we write your name down. It goes into a queue. And every month we give away five Metalla prizes. Yeah, we do. Uh, the month of December is Ride the Lightning theme. So we're giving out a, uh, Ride the Lightning flasks, Ride the Lightning pint glass and the Ride the Lightning Deluxe box set. Yeah. Do we have a Ride, a Ride the Lightning blanket for We December? have a Ride the Lightning blanket as well. And they are cozy. They're cozy. I got one on my couch right now yeah. uh, under that Destroyer blanket. Yeah. I might just curl up over here my, and record my, the rest of this episode. My poor wife, every time she comes to my studio, it just has more skulls and more metal shit. <laughs> Why do you think my wife doesn't come into my studio? <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, we give you a week to claim the prize. All you got to do, uh, if you if you hear your name in the prize, you send us an email. And uh, the prize from last month is still unclaimed it are the uh, shot glasses. Yeah, what the hell, guys? Well, all that means is another opportunity for another listener to win. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, there are chances for you to win post when we initially draw, apparently. So Ethan's going to draw another name out of my Skull Voss over here. Skull um, slash drumstick holder slash incense holder. I've actually got Lars Ulrich's drumstick in there. Ooh, look at this. Clint's got some uh, incense. We're both incense burners in our studios. We are, yeah. Clint's got one. It's the uh, uh, the Satya brand, which is the finest incense out there. Mm, of course. If, by the way, if they want to uh, endorse this podcast, you are more than welcome to hook us up with all the Nog Trampa we can handle. Absolutely. But this one's called Positive Vibes. Oh, man, I love Positive Vibes. Right, I'm going to remove these drumsticks, including the Lars one. I'm not going to let any names fall on the ground. All right. Drum roll, please. With those drum, with Lars's drumstick. <laughs> all right. You can hear this. I'm searching. I think I got one. Searching, Seek, and Destroy? Uh oh There's one. There's, they're attached. Oh, no. Okay. I narrowed it down to one. All right. Here we go. Let me unfold this little guy here. Clint's adorable handwriting. <laughs> All right. It is, I think this is Mendy, Mendy's Banya. Review left on November or November 12th of uh, just last month. Oh, cool. Yeah. Great. So Mendy's, I think, and I hope I'm reading this right, but Mendy's Banya. Is that what you think it is? Mm, let's see here. 
Mindy's Banya. That's what, yeah. <laughs> that's what it appears to say. So, all right, Mindy's Banya, send us an email, metalupyourpodcastshow at gmail.com with your, to claim your prize, say, hey, I won the I won the thing. And yeah, then so you, you won the shot glasses. Yeah, and then your address, and uh, we'll mail, we'll happily mail it out to you, like Santa's little helpers. Gladly. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, all, all these prizes that we're, we're, we keep speaking of are, are only possible through the generous donations of our patrons. And uh, we've got a bunch of them on there. We've got some cool stuff happening. Go to patreon.com slash metalupyourpodcast. A lot of cool stuff happening over there. And we got some new patrons this week. So uh, at the bare minimum, you get a shout out on the show. So we would like to say thank you and recognize Zoo Borns, Tom Trinkkeller, Martin Hawkins, and then a, a user simply named Tom. It's probably Tom from MySpace. It's probably Tom Kui. It's Tom Kui or Tom from MySpace <laughs> if I had to put some money down on it. What's Tom from MySpace been up to? Just being a rich guy. Just like laying in beds of money and all that stuff. Just Didn't he get involved with Facebook at one point, get hired on there or something early on? I don't know. No clue. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to remove myself from social media, but it's impossible. Um, so thank you guys for your, your, uh, your generous uh, donations to the show. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, again, all that stuff we're talking about is made possible because of people like that. It's true. I mean, that we without that support, like we've been able to take the show to levels that I didn't think would be possible in our first year, right? Because of that kind of support. So, yeah. there's different ways to give. You can give a dollar, you can give five dollars, ten dollars, blah blah blah. And we have different incentives for all that. We have this EP that we have coming out real soon. It's being mixed. Um, if you pledge five dollars or more, you get that that EP. So correct. It's all very cool. So you want to tell them where they can find us and all the stuff. Yeah, you can just, I mean, at this point, you guys, unless you're a brand new listener, you should know. Just type in Metal Up Your Podcast on anything. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you'll find us. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff going on, especially on Instagram. We're always posting little cover songs like Clint recently just did the Fade to Black solos, things like that. So we're having a good time over there. The numbers have grown on Instagram more than the others. So I think that's where a lot of people have kind of honed in on social media. But mm. um you're welcome to join us anywhere on social media. We are there. <laughs> it is fun. I mean, we interact all day, every day through yeah. that stuff. And, yeah. so, and it's pretty fun and funny. So uh, the best way to reach us, though, is our, through our email address, which is show at gmail.com. We read five emails per episode. Let's get into some emails. The emails. All right. Our first email is from our longtime listener, multi-time writer inner, Gene Froman. What's up, Gene? How you doing, Gene? Uh, this is addressed to Clint, uh, but I'll read it. Uh, Clint agreed on reinventing the steel. Underrated. Agreed that um, agreed the book uh, should be a Netflix documentary. This episode was a good Cliff's Notes, no pun intended, version of the book. Since I can't seem to get past the first half of the book, of course we're talking about Back to the Front, the, our last uh, episode we did. Um, they really should have a pocket version for commuters who can't lug that giant version around. Uh, by the way, the Skype jingle had me laughing so hard. That was our <laughs> Skype outro. <laughs> yeah. Tom Queen not answering his call. Also completely organic. That was not planned. Very organic. For those of you trying to find time to read the book, I, I recommend it as a nice accompaniment to bathroom time. It's very good for bathroom time. Yeah, you just have to have a large book holder next to your toilet. <laughs> or you can just have like, uh, uh, just you can hire someone to come hold it for you and turn the pages. <laughs> uh, Gene ends, by the way, by saying, P.S. Still not over Tom's thought on Savage. That was rough. Yeah, he's, you, you know, know. To each their own, man. He doesn't have to like it. It's cool. You know, I know people that don't even, they like two songs on Hardwired, like the thrash ones. Like, oh, it's, oh, thrash ones, that's it. But that's cool. Tom can not like Am I Savage. I dig that song. Well, you know, I, I'm a Metallica fan, so <laughs> I like the band called Metallica. <laughs> and I think he, you know, he. I think he gets a. I think he gets a little kick out of being the contrarian. I think he might. Yeah, I think he likes being the villain a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's the is he the Joker or the uh two, what is he the maybe the Riddler the Riddler yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The Riddler. The Riddler. Uh, our next email is from Cole Roberts. Cole writes, hey guys, I wanted to congratulate you on your first year of the podcast as it's coming up. The show's meant so much to me. As a fellow podcaster myself, I don't get the opportunity to listen to as many other shows as I'd like to, but this one has always been my go-to. Your podcast hit at the perfect time because not only was I able to rediscover the band, but I had some great episodes uh, full of fun information that helped my love for the band grow. Clint, loved your appearance on Single Podcast Theory. Loved hearing what you brought to the table with those dudes and hearing the great interaction and depth look at No Code. For those of you who don't know, I was on Single Podcast Theory's last episode where we, it's an all Pearl Jam podcast by our friends, yeah. the Brads. And uh, it's, it's the format of their show is real similar to ours. And if you like Pearl Jam, uh, their show's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we had them on the, our last revisited. So ch oh, yeah. check that out. I already forgot about that. Yeah. 
It's been so long. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I was a guest on that show. It was a lot of fun. He says, Ethan, I love the dingies. 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 <laughs> That's my old, that's my my first touring band, and we got that about every day. Okay. Is it called the Dingies or the Dingies? Yeah, sorry, I had to add to that. It's all cool. <laughs> you I don't may care, have thought man. it was it's been a while. Me. He says I love the Dingies as well as the Supertones so much. Another band Ethan was in Armageddon Massive was my favorite album back in the day. Just wanted oh, you to man. know. So sweet. That, yeah, that was our first record we did. Uh, shit, it'll be twenty years old next year. Let me guess, you won a Grammy for it? Um, gosh, what what part of that record didn't I win a Grammy for? Um, <laughs> Best debut by a tiny band from Orange County. <laughs> he says, hope to see you dudes in Nashville for the live show if it happens, which it is happening. It's just a matter of uh, locking down a venue. Yeah, we're trying. So, to, we had a venue locked down, and then th- some details kind of got squirrely. So yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out. And Yeah, it might, we might have to push it back a little bit, but we, we are still planning on doing uh, some sort of live event, hangout, anniversary celebration, Metallica night. And possibly uh, a, a friend of ours who we'll talk about before we get into the episode um, might be down to set up a little mini museum of all his stuff he's collected. So Yeah, we should talk about that after the emails. We will, for yeah. Sure. Uh, he, uh, let's see. He goes on to say, if you're interested in hearing the podcast I do, it's called Scary Movie Ice Cream Night. <laughs> That's great. My best friend and I talk about horror movies and horror-related topics while eating new flavors of ice cream. <laughs> what a great This sounds like right premise. up your alley. Well, he, I mean, I don't know your, what your love for ice cream is. However... Uh, I'm not a sweets guy. But you like horror... Love it. And in, in, in horror sweet. <laughs> <laughs> By he, the way, as you hold that up, you, I'm trying not to look at it. You're showing me your top 10 no, right now. No, so really? We, Don't yes, look. Move. I didn't look. All right. Thanks. I just, Thank gl- you. A, a glance. I want to make you aware of Thank this. Thank you for so. having integrity and telling me. Well, you know, we're almost at a year. I really have to up the integrity <laughs> level of this podcast. <laughs> he does say we've been at it for about three years. Clint, you may dig it since you're a hard dude. I haven't been able to listen to it yet, but I sure as hell will be tuning in real soon. I just love that they eat ice cream. That sounds awesome. I mean, here's what I want to say to Cole. Like, I want to come on the show and talk about horror movies. Do I have to eat ice cream to do it? This will be a good cue for you to do Vegan Ethan voice. Here we go. If I'm ever on the show, I would uh, definitely have some uh, coconut milk ice cream. <laughs> well, I, I, I like ice cream, but I can't eat it because of the dairies in it. But uh, but uh, as long as no animals are harder than making of the coconut, then I'm, I'm, I'm down to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, thanks, Cole. Hey, Cole, send us an email and let's try to work it out. I'd love to come talk hard. Yeah, I'm going to check that podcast out. I might do it on my drive home from HQ2 back to HQ1. Neato. Isn't that cool? So I can at least get into about 20 minutes of an episode. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks, man. Uh, our next email is from Tommy Trinkkeller. New patron. New patron. Hey, guys. I uh, recently enjoyed the Back to the Front episode. I really w- wanted that book for quite some time, and it was really cool to hear more about it. Also, it was awesome to finally hear you guys have my main man, Tom, from Alpha Metallica on, as I've been a fan of his podcast since almost the beginning. Um, and repeated glowing reviews of Mel Up Your Podcasts are the main reason I found your show. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, we love Tom. We love his show, and we've talked about it a bunch. Alpha Metallica, go check it out. And we're going to, Ethan and I are actually going to, so Ethan and I have been on Alpha Metallica before. Um, if you guys don't know, his show, he goes through all of Metallica songs Alpha Metallically. Alpha Metallically. <laughs> that was good. Why'd you quit? Oh. Alpha Metallically. And, Alpha Metallically. And uh, uh, I did better than you, Ethan did Black, and we're actually going to be on the show in February to talk about Inner Sandman. Yeah. Which I, I'm stoked to talk about. Yeah, I love it's like I love that we're doing a deep cut too. So. Well, we need to really <laughs> d- dive deep and and talk about a super underappreciated, rarely heard Metallica. Song. Rarely heard. Yeah, I, I don't know how many times they've played it live, but I mean, we'll we'll shed some light on that song for those of you who haven't heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> he goes on to say, last night I finally decided to become a patron. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've been debating it for a long time. I'm a broke college student. Uh, but I finally figured out I might as well di- divide, eh, excuse me, divert $5 from my monthly beer slash scotch budget to, uh, to show my appreciation for the great work you guys are doing and for that sweet, sweet cover EP when, whenever it comes out. It's coming soon. It's, it's soon. Don't it's worry. It's being mixed. Yeah. And you know, here's what I would say about the Patreon. Like if you, we've had some people write in and say they want to support the show, but they can't afford it. And to that, I would say, you know, don't sweat that shit. If, if it's, if it's, you know, if you're in school or for whatever is going on, if it's hard for you to figure out how to do it, don't worry about it. Yeah. We're not, I mean, we're, we're just letting people know that it's there. So if, if they have the means to do it, then great. We appreciate the support. If not, no worries. We and, understand. And we're just grateful to have people listening. So we really appreciate anyone and everyone. Um, but he does make a good point though. Like it does basically amount to, 
you know, a couple of cups of coffee a week. Right. So if you want to, because, you know, what we have most of is the one and $5 donations. Yeah. So all that stuff really adds up and, and makes the show grow and makes the show better. Yeah, so. absolutely. Thanks, Tommy. Really appreciate Thank you. that, dude. Uh, our next email is from John Schaefer. Hey, Clint and Ethan, just wanted to say, hey, I absolutely love the podcast. Found you guys about a month or two ago and been and haven't been able to stop listening. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. His wife left him. Kids neglected. Yeah, he's definitely living out of his car. Fired from his job, yeah. yeah. He rolls into McDonald's to get on Wi-Fi to download the episode like Clint used to do. <laughs> I did used to do that with other bums who were doing it. Um, okay. Uh, all those shenanigans made me lose my place. As a huge Metallica fan, you guys are absolutely A1 with your topics and discussions about the greatest band in the world. Metallica, for me personally, has been a lifesaver, and their music has saved me many times from my own personal destruction. Wow. Very, that's I, awesome. I would probably put myself in that category, too. I, I mean, I would say that or even something as simple as, you know, you're in a shit mood. I'm in a shit mood. You keep picking at me. Yeah. Um, what I tell you? Even like I'm not kidding. Even this morning, I just, you know, sometimes you wake up and you kind of just don't feel right. And you're just kind of, uh, you know, I was just kind of off this morning. And then when I started going through cover songs to make, you know, finalize this list for this episode, I got to a certain song, I won't say it because it's on my list, but mm-hmm. it just got me so pumped and excited. And all of a sudden, my day just changed. So that's, this band has an impact on people from the simplest things all the way to the heaviest things. Yeah, and I think and, that's great. And I think that's music in general, but there does seem to be a sort of special correlation with this band, yeah, with I the agree. power of their music. I mean, one of the reasons for all of you out there that I'm such a big reload guy is that at the time that I was really into that record, I think it was ninth or 10th grade for me, and I had a pretty rough year at yeah. school. And that, that re- I mean, it sounds so cheesy to say, but that record kind of felt like my best friend. That's the power of James. <laughs> <laughs> I love our Huey Lewis and the News crossover. I know, you got to do it sometimes. Well, speaking of, we're actually announcing a Huey Lewis and the News podcast. <laughs> It's hip to be cast. Is that the <laughs> title of it? It's hip to be Ethan and Clint. I don't know. <laughs> he says, you two are a treat to listen to. I look forward to many more episodes, interviews, and jokes. The Torben accent gets me every time, and the Dave hello me thing. You're welcome. <laughs> ha ha. I listen to you guys on your on my, my hour commute to work, and your opinions and thoughts really connect with me. Keep up the good work, and just know that you make this fan even more into the band we all love. Awesome. What an amazing compliment, man. Yeah, that's great, man. And really we're, we're really happy that, you know, Metallica has gotten you through some heavy shit. So that's great, man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And our last email is from, oh, man, I, I'm this, I've, I've read this wrong before. Sanjit Sin? Sign? Sing? Sing? <laughs> it's S-I-N-G-H. I think it's Sing. <laughs> sing. <laughs> Which is a really common name down here in Tennessee. <laughs> it's very common down here in these parts. He said, thanks for the shout out on the podcast uh, for my patron contribution. Which, thank you for the patron. Yeah, thank you very much. He said, it was several episodes, uh, he's several episodes back now. I'm catching up after being away overseas. Uh, not sure what the last name you guys have on your end, uh, but, it, but it is Sing. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. It's probably pronounced Sign. Or, I don't know how you, how you pronounce that. I mean, these are the unsolved mysteries of Can our you, life. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this, Sanjay. Can you just send us another email with the with the correct pronunciation? Can you make a voice memo and and, and record <laughs> yeah. yourself saying it and send it to us? Say it five times so, so we really have it. Um, he said that's absolutely not not totally important. I was just good about to do like the Sarah sells. Sanjit sells seashells at the by the sink. <laughs> Say that five times. Sanjit sells seashells. <laughs> Uh, he says, what is important is, it, is the great job both of you are doing on this podcast. I'm a huge Metallica fan, but what drew me to the podcast is just the purity of the passion for this legendary band and the friendship between the both of you that comes across every week on the show. Aww. Aww. <laughs> cute. cute. Um, two buds talking about great music. Um, it's always the simple things that end up great and making life enjoyable, isn't it? It is. It is. He's right. Yeah. He said, thanks for all the great work. Sanjit in San Francisco. Very He's cool. in Frisco, as they love. Oh that, my god, I love that. Frisco. People love that when you call it that. There. The first time I ever went to San Francisco, I was touring. Um, I was maybe nineteen or twenty, and I was kind of seeing the West Coast for the first time. And I can't remember. We were, we were in the Castro District. Perfect. There's a really great club in the Castro called the American Swedish Music Hall. I don't, have you ever played the there? Great American Music Hall? Or is it? It's just called the Swedish American Music Hall. The Swedish American Music Hall. There's a um, Cafe du Nord is a rock club beneath it, but above it's a listening room. Oh, cool! And my first time through, I was playing guitar for this kind of folksy, this guy named Griffin House, this great songwriter. So we were, it was kind of delicate music, but yeah. um, we were trying to kill some time, and we just sort of wandered into this art museum. Yeah. 
we were like, oh, cool, an art museum. We're like, we'll go check out some art for an hour. It was just a straight up hardcore BDSM yeah. gay yeah. exhibit. That, that'll happen in the Castro. And just being from Alabama, like, I grew up with gay friends, grew up thinking progressively. It's no problem sure, there, sure, yeah. but it was, it was still, like, sh- shocking. I mean, it was yeah, very it was, explicit. Especially if you've never been to San Francisco and, and seen anything close to that, you know? And at first we were kind of like, oh, what? And then we just sort of like, let's check it out. And we ended up yeah. having a fucking blast. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it, there's a lot of great stuff over there. Um, my wife is from the Bay Area, so I've spent a ton of time in San Francisco and Oakland. And It's my favorite city in the States. San Francisco? Yeah. I, I'd put Oakland up there. It, it, it's it's one of those cities that I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Sandra could agree with me, uh, depending on how, how long he's lived there, that it's similar to how East Nashville is over here, that like it's just changed so much. Yeah. It doesn't have that really good spirit and... and you know, whatever drew you to it first, you know, is kind of gone. You know, I know a lot of bands that used to be based out of San Francisco all moved to Oakland or even further inland because it got so expensive. And right. it's the, it's the, I believe right now it is the most expensive city in the world to live in. It's unbelievable. I mean, my friends who rent there, like what they're paying to rent a place half the size of my house. Yeah. It's insane. only four grand a month. Exactly. <laughs> and we all, we got, share a bathroom uh, I, with, I got a deal. With, with 10 other neighbors. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you for that email. Uh, and yeah, like we said, we love San Francisco and appreciate you supporting the show and writing in. All right. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the email. So we did a really cool thing this week. One of our patrons, actually the patron who donates the most money. Yeah, his name yeah, is Chris. $5,000 a month. It's, <laughs> me and Clint are retired now. It's great. <laughs> We're actually recording this from HQ4, which is on a yacht <laughs> yeah. in the Canary Islands. Yeah. Well, we lied a little bit. We're on the, the local lake nearby, <laughs> but we are on a yacht, though. So Chris wrote out to uh, reached out and said that uh, he was going to be coming through Nashville and saw, wanted to see if we could get a beer. And Ethan and I actually, were um, our schedules were open, and we went and met Chris for a beer. And we were wanting beer. And we, well, we bought him beer all night, by the way. Yeah. He bought a round for us. Oh, did he? Yeah, okay. he did. Um, but uh, it was wonderful to meet Chris. We talked for about two or three hours at our fa- Ethan and I's favorite local bar called Mickey's Tavern. And uh, man, what a cool dude! Yeah, we had a great time. You know, it's always weird when you you know you meet somebody who's a fan of something you do. You meet him in person. You know, you you, you know we kind of were joking about it beforehand. Like he could be a serial killer. He could follow us home. We don't know. But thankfully, Chris was like the nicest dude. Well, the funny thing was I got to the bar a little later and Ethan had already been hanging with Chris. Yeah. So Ethan came and met me at the bar while I was getting a, a drink. And he was like, dude, this guy's insane. <laughs> he goes, what? I was like, oh no. He was like, I'm just kidding. He's great. I, sh- I should have kept the joke going for longer and had Chris in on it. But well, you know, in this last tour I did with Bob Schneider, I met fans every, in every yeah, city. Yeah, I know. I mean, awesome. it was a ton of fun. Like, because Here's what we get to do. We get the podcast crap out of the way, and then we just talk Metallica. Which is basically still the podcast. I just, well, I just mean, no, we get the podcast out of the way, like, oh, I love the podcast, love the show. and Yeah. You guys are amazing. And we Chris, love you. And Chris was actually, we had a really great conversation about what works with the show, what maybe doesn't work, how it could be better. Like, we love all that kind of feedback. Oh, yeah. If it's from some dickhead who hates the Dave and Stain boys, I don't care. But if it's from someone who cares <laughs> enough about the show to support it, and it comes from love... Yeah, we're super open to that. So for sure, and he also had this great Metallica stuff. He's okay. So he, this is what I was talking about before in in regards to our uh, us doing our anniversary kind of live event in Nashville. Is Chris has got like a pretty crazy collection of Metallica stuff, even stuff that he's made. He had he shows a picture of it. It was in his truck because he's in the middle of moving to North Carolina. It's like a five foot long thing with like that's all dedicated to the Denver show he went to. It's mm-hmm. like the picture of the lightning hitting the stadium. It's like that's the background. It's got a set list. It's got all the stuff signed and it's a picture with the band. It's, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Passed. So and he and he was just showing us stuff. And he I think you know he said something like this is just a little bit of what I have. I, I've got a ton of stuff. So we, we we you know there's a possibility that if he's available and we do an event, he might bring a bunch of his swag down and set up a little mini museum for our event. I think that would be so rad. It'd be awesome. No we, pressure. Chris. A, a lot of people have reached out and said they want to even travel to come to that party. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Yeah, well, we should be hearing some. I, it, my goal is by next week's episode, you'll have info on this. So okay, cool. Um, we ready to talk top ten covers? I'm totally ready to do that. <laughs> totally, totally, right. totally, 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 totally. Oh, I'm using that for the compilation <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Totally, 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 totally. <laughs> Use that shit. Hey, is Torben here? Because I'm getting kind of hungry. Many 
Greetings and welcome to another edition of Recipes with the Outlaw Torben. Of course, you know I am Torben. Moving on. It is almost Christmas time. We celebrate this in Denmark quite often, at least once a year. I'm going to explain to you how to make a eggnog latte, like me and Lars always get at Starbucks. Oh, Lars and I love, we love to sit down and gossip over six or seven of these. Delicious. You need four ounces boiling water, one or two teaspoons instant espresso, or as Lars says, espresso. One fourth cup milk, one half cup eggnog, one teaspoon pure vanilla extract, one half tablespoon light brown sugar, one eighth tablespoon ground cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, or to taste plus more for dusting. Lars and I love dusting. And lastly, it is optional, but Lars and I love this, especially at Starbucks. We tell the baristas, put more, put more. Whipped cream. And don't forget to eat this with a spoon as we do in Denmark. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah. Whatever you may be celebrating, Torben is with you. Wow, that sounds delicious. Uh, yummy. You know, that's the, I believe that's one of the perfect things to eat around the holidays it's cold out it warms you warms you up warms your soul particularly on a yacht in canary islands yeah or particularly hovering on a, on a carpet as torben does the, are the canary islands a thing uh, sure <laughs> I, I was doing a show once with this really rich promoter like a billionaire promoter yeah and he was getting a kick out of hanging out with the rock and roll band guys like he was like i'm slumming it for a minute with yeah, these I'm rock cool. guys i'm cool and when i was hanging out in his he had this he had his own tour bus that he brought to the wow. festival that he hang, hung out in and so we're hanging out, and it's like him and his other kind of billionaire friends. Like that's all you hang out with, pretty much, or like, other rich people. Well, like Don Henley was there. He's friends with Don Henley. Oh, old DH. I wasn't talking to Don Henley because I would have pooped in my pants because I'm a huge Eagles fan. But he's got, he he's like, yeah, man. He's like, you ever get out to the Canary Islands? And I was like, no. He's like, really? He's like, we really? He's don't. Like, he's like, my wife and I go there. Like, I mean, he was being. It's just like he's not talked to a not rich person in so long. Well, maybe he thought like because you were playing for an artist and you were on stage and like, yo, yo, he's probably doing well. I'm sure he's. I think he just forgot that I'm not rich. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> You're like, hey man, you can make me rich. I serious. <laughs> really quick. I serious. <laughs> this is so weird. I haven't told many people this. We were drinking and kind of getting on, having a good time. I seriously thought about asking him to give me a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Like, bro, I love you, man. I've had such a good time on your bus. Can I borrow a million dollars? No, not borrow. Give. Give. Like, I thought about making this whole speech of like, man, it would just change my life. It would, I would pay it forward. I would use it to make art. Like, because a million dollars to this guy is literally nothing. Oh, yeah. What if he just like pulled out his checkbook? It's like, of course, man. Hey, man, would you consider giving me a million? You just got to promise you and I and our wives are going on vacation in the Canary <laughs> Islands next Canary year. Islands. <laughs> I don't know what I would do if someone gave me a million dollars. I would, well, I'd probably, after shitting myself, I'd. First thing I'd probably do is probably hire like a financial guy. The better question is, if I had a million dollars, what would I do if someone asked me for it? <laughs> like, I don't have a million dollars. What are you talking about? Just, it's just a flat no. Like, yeah. No. No, dude. I didn't make my fortune by giving it out to fucking, you know, rap scallions like you. <laughs> All right. Speaking of a million dollars, let's get to our million dollar lists here. <laughs> are they their million dollar list now? Eh, sure, why not? Okay, cool. I mean, mine's I'm pretty pretty happy with mine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from 10 to 1. Uh, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the song, where it comes from, why it's so meaningful to us. Why it is. Are there any some c- curveballs on yours, you think? On mine? Um, I would say yes, one. I think my number 10 is a curveball, and I've got one other that you might consider a, cur- a curveball. I'm not really sure. So All right, well, let's get I'll, into we'll it. Leave it for, uh, we'll leave it up to the fans to decide. All right, so my number 10 is the song Merciful Fate by Merciful Fate. Cool. Which uh, Metallica released on the Garage Inc. compilation in 98. It's like 11 minutes long. 
Right. It's so fucking cool. And the reason I love this cover so much is is I can hear, even though it's them covering it, I can hear Metallica's early influence on yes. so many of these riffs. Like, there's riffs that are in this song that if you didn't know Merciful Fate at all or didn't know it was a cover, you would think this is like, oh, that's one of their leftover riffs from Kill 'em All. Hmm. There's some cool shit in there. Very cool. Um, so yeah, I was re- I was I I went through that song a few times yesterday and today, and I was like, yeah, I got to put this on the list. I think Lars has actually directly mentioned Merciful Fate as an influence in the early days, meaning like where they learned to be intricate with yeah. tempo and with with changes in their songs. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. It almost feels like it's a it's a bit of a medley, you know, like it's like four different songs because there's tempo changes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's a kick-ass song. If you've if you've not made it to the song Garage Inc. or skipped over it, give it another shot. Garage Inc., the first disc, is a lot of fun because it, if you love the sort of Bob Rock era, the way the band mm-hmm. sounded, the way James sang, uh, disc two is more of a compilation of the yeah, 590 ADP yeah. and, and like B-sides and shit. But disc one is a lot of fun. Even even if it's a song that's a little squirrely, the, listening to the band sound that good is fun. Oh, yeah, they sound great on this. All right. All right, number nine is Bread Fan. <laughs> Which, as Clint mentioned in a previous episode, we don't really know what the lyrics are after he says bread fan. Bread fan, open up a mind, never sell a time, never lose Bread fan. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that um, the, I think it's the a, original lyrics have been lost. Well, it's, Nobody knows what they are anymore. Well, it's, it's, I can tell you what it is without even knowing the lyrics. It's a song about bread. And fan, yeah, it's like it's. Well, well, the, I, I he loves it's to about, eat bread. He, no, he loves to eat bread. He does he love to eat he bread. Carb, he carb loads. I feel like what it is is either that or or he was trying to do some kind of hybrid a fan made out of bread i don't know a fan made out of bread maybe yeah yeah we're just trying to like cut down on his carbon footprint yeah. i think you're right though he's, he's probably just a big fan of bread but so he's like i'm a bread, look I'm a i bread love fan. bread and look we know it's about money we're making a joke or the band bread <laughs> oh 60s classic rock never know yeah all right so bread fan was the b-side to not only eye of the beholder but harvester of sorrow it was Very on cool. both yeah all right so my number eight i believe this is Potentially my first curveball. Um, Remember Tomorrow by Iron Maiden. Wow, the one that we didn't know. We didn't really know existed, actually. And then, someone, But it's so good, right? It's really good, yeah. And I was um, I was listening to that one and the original Iron Maiden one, kind of just comparing them. And, I mean, Metallica killed this one. They did a great job of it. Well, if, I mean, it's that disc three. It's it's the Greg Fiddleman treatment. So that, that, that the whole disc three stuff that they did in the studio from yeah. Hardwired yeah. sounds incredible. It really does, yeah. Um, and it appeared on the Made in Heaven tribute. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's one of Metallica's early influences, so I mean, why not cover them? But So that could be a bit of a curveball, I'm not really sure, but uh, there it is. Number seven, Last Caress. I got something to say, I killed your baby today. Off Garage A is re revisited. It also appears on disc two of Garage Inc. So would you would you say it's Last Caress slash Green Hell? Uh, well, those are two different songs, so I just chose Last Caress. Oh really? Yeah, they're two different songs. I, I just kinda I know they don't do it that way live, but I yeah. as far as the recording, I always consider them. I, I'm just not really a f uh, never really been a fan of Green Hell. Uh you you, 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 the Misfits. I think it's I think it's a cool song. Touch it, shut it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Glenn Danzig is such a strange dude. Dude, he was terrible on the 30th anniversary show. That was when we talked about it on that episode, on the 30th anniversary episode, where like Hetfield had to like cue him on when to come in. Like he was just like looking at him with the mic. Like, oh, believe me, I, thanks for letting me be here. Believe me, I know because I've just listened to 18 hours of me and you talking about Metallica <laughs> while I'm making this compilation. Yeah, I'm gonna. I might actually start compiling those from like current to and, and meet. You know, when we'll meeting in the middle. Just to, not just to knock out some, but yeah, I'll be getting there soon. All right, um, yeah. I mean, I, I, in, in my opinion, you know, I'm a huge, Metall- huge fan of Last Caress. 
Metallica doing the Misfits is always it's a, it's always it's, a plus. It's a killer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number six, Helpless by Diamond Head. That is my favorite track off of Garage Inc. Or sorry, Garage Inc. is re-revisited. It's on both. It's on both. But yeah. um, it's just so good, man. The chorus is great. It sounds like it should be a Metallica song. Also on that disc three of Hardwire, they do a live, a live show from, I think it's a record store day show. But they it was over- uh, Ras, Ras, uh, Rasputin's in... Uh, Rasmu- Rasmussen? Rast, Fla- Rast, Flaming Rast Rasmussen? Tolbins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was um, Rasputin's records But they in, open in with Berkeley. Helpless. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, to me, just every, everything about this song sounds like, again, if you didn't know who Diamond Head was and Metallica just, hey, check out this song. They, you thought it was a Metallica song? Mm-hmm. It sounds like it should be, Yeah, in my opinion. I-M-O. <laughs> um, BRB. BRB. LOL. All right, number five, Blitzkrieg. Nice. By Blitzkrieg. <laughs> We have no overlap so far. Oh, wait. No, we do. Sorry. We do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and this was the B-side to uh, Not Only Creeping Death, but it was also on the Kill 'Em All re-release in 1988. Ooh. Um, it's just fucking cool, man. It's, yeah. let us have peace, let us have rice. <laughs> rice. You, but you you definitely... Let us have peace, let us have rice. <laughs> We're hungry. Let's <laughs> Craig. You definitely, you, you have a punk rock soul in you and you, you yeah you lean towards that well i, I mean think. i will say it was uh it was hard for me not to include something mellow on here oh really yeah i'm got, sure i'm I've sure several you mellows on yeah mine. I, dude it was tough man i'll, I'll, I'll kind of tell you maybe a few that i didn't put on here afterwards but um okay but yeah so anyways blitzkrieg is i mean it's just a kick-ass song um great metallica does a great version of it obviously uh, I, I mean i heard this early on and, and what i guess was probably on that kill them all re-release because my first version of Kill 'Em All on CD had this on it, so what, this in Am I Evil? Yeah, and I thought originally like this was a Metallica song. I didn't really understand what covers were back then. Right, this was like two weeks ago. <laughs> exactly, yeah, it was two weeks ago. So, anyways, there's that uh, number four. This is uh, this is where I just just get so good for me. Um, the Prince by Diamond Head. <laughs> Also, B side to Harvester of Sorrow, mm-hmm. but not Eye of the Beholder. Um, <laughs> I mean, the Prince is so kick ass. I mean, it's the, the, fast, the, riff, the riffage in it is unbelievable. <laughs> and I love hearing it in that kind of Justice Era tone. Yep, you know the whole outro to it, the fast like guitar guitar mini thing is so cool. That's what that's that was one of the songs this morning out that got me pumped. I was like, fuck yeah! It turned your frown upside down. It really did. You know, I felt Reading like, rainbow. You know, I felt like a prince after I listened to it. <laughs> I can go anywhere. <laughs> Take a look. It's in a book. It's fucking reading rainbow. It fucking is. <laughs> All right. Um, number three. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Remember those Tootsie Roll commercials? Oh, absolutely. How many licks does it take to the center of a Tootsie yeah. Roll? Three. One, two, three. I can't do that. <laughs> you can't roll your, roll your tongue? Three. Three. You're a talented specimen. Well, I think a lot of it was learning a a, a bit of Spanish in school. A, a bit of the old... Uh, you say words like carro, and it's... A bit of the old nino. Which is Spanish for the nino. My, uh, my wife's Puerto Rican, and, and uh, her sweet family, who they're like, they're my family now, of course, obviously, but when I first started hanging with her like eight years ago, her dad was like, mm, he's like, you gonna, you gonna be learning Spanish? And I was like, uh... Yes, sir. I'll, tr- I'll try. See? <laughs> El Nino. Uh... Si, sí, senor. <laughs> si, sí, senor. And then like two years later at Christmas, he's like, so Clinton, you learn some Spanish? And you're like, um, this is my esposa. 
He's like, you learn the word wife and that's it. Oh, dude, once we got tied, I was like, his name's Edwin. I was like, oh, I'm not learning. That's, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you guys feel free to just No speak. Espanol for Clinto. <laughs> Sorry. That is one thing I really wish I would have stuck with, like growing up in Southern California. That was like, I mean, you could take French. And well, the time Italian. to do it's when you're young. I mean, it really is. I mean, maybe when I get older, I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to get some uh, Rosetta Stone and I'm going to learn some Spain- Spanish. Well, I tried to learn it one time, but uh, I had a hard time learning it. And uh, I've got the Rosetta Stone, but I still had Windows 95 and it wouldn't run it now. Do you even have a, 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 a disc player or anything? I, I, well, a disc player. I think I have a tape deck and uh, I have an 8-track. and uh, Really? I have my I wonder uh, if they make Rosetta, Rosetta Stone on 8-track. They make a... Gra- uh, <laughs> they make a Rosetta Sp- <laughs> Spanish comes in a 38-track collection. Because <laughs> you only fit the equivalent of two songs you have, on You there. have to listen to it in an old Cadillac from the 60s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Speaking um, of Pawpaw being here... Oh, yeah. You know what? It's been a while since we've heard from Papa. I wonder what uh, what sort of poetry he's into these days. You know, I heard a rumor that he's going to do So What? Because really? we're doing the covers record. That's, that's bold. Yeah. Let's go into the poetry corner and see what's up. Let's do it. Back to the poetry corner, we're plum tickled to have you. Today we're going to be reading from a poem called So What? Originally by the Anti Nowhere League, made popular by heavy metal band Metallica. So freaking what? Well, I've been to Hastings and uh, I've been to Brighton. I've been to Eastburn too. So what? I've been here and I've been there. I've been every gall darn where. So what? So what, you born little butt? Well, who cares? Who cares what you do? Who cares? Who cares about you now? Well, I love the Queen, and uh, I love Sebastian Bach. I even wore on my favorite sock. So what? I've tended sheep, and uh, I've herded the goat. I spilled Mama's buttermilk on my favorite coat. So what? Well, so what, you born little butthead? Well, who cares? Who cares what you do? Who cares? Who cares about you? I don't. Scoot. Well, I've drunk that and I've drunk this. I sp- regret to say I spewed up one time on a pint of piss. So what? I've had skank and I've had speed. I've seen Rocky defeat Apollo Creed. So what? So what, you born little butt? Well, who cares? Who cares what you do? Who cares? Who cares about you? Well, I've had crabs and, uh, well, I have had lice and I've had to clap and it wasn't nice. So what? I've seen this and, and I've seen that. I've even run out of quarters at the laundry mat. So what? So what, you born little butthole? Well, who cares? Who cares what you do? Uh, who cares? Who cares about you, okay? So freaking what, see? Thank you for coming back down to the poetry corner. We'll see you next time here. Wow, Papa! Whoa! I did not know that you kiss your mother with that mouth. I did not know that he had the capacity to speak that way. I'd imagine that he's he's not going to speak like that around the dinner table. No, I, th- I think he was doing it for the art, for the poetry. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he he's all about poetry and and he uh, loves poetry, uh, expressing himself. And yeah. but I can't imagine him saying that, you know, at the dinner table at Christmas. I time. think he's up for poet laureate of 2017, I believe, for the for the American poet. for for yeah. Sumner County. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, anyways, where was I? I mean, number, number three. <clears throat> the Prince was number four. Number three, Back to the Misfits, Die, Die, My Darling. Love it. It's so fucking good. Love it's it. one of my favorite Misfit songs already. And Metallica just sounds obviously so heavy, so huge with that Bob Rock production. 
Headfield's vocal is amazing in this song. It's it, it, yeah, it's a barn burner. I mean, I love this. Song. I gotta say, with very few exceptions, I prefer Metallica's versions of all these songs. Well, yeah, I so mean, few you, exceptions. Here's but. the thing: if, if you're a Misfits fan, or if you've even tried to listen to them, they don't really have any records. And I'm talking Glenn Danzig era. You know, um, I didn't really listen to them past him leaving, but. Uh, they weren't known for their production on their records. It's pretty. It's pretty. It can be pretty rough. Punk. It's pretty punk. It's very punk, and mm-hmm. I, I, and that that's also what I do love about it too. Oh, me too. You know, some of it it just sounds so sloppy, and their guitars are out of tune. But there's a charm in that, and that's what made them. You know who they and, who and, they are. And they're one of those bands where, like, if you like one of their songs, you'll like all of them. Oh yeah, they, and, and there's a lot of really catchy. I mean, if you listen to Last Caress, I mean, it's one of their most catchy songs. I mean, that's a great melody in that song. Hundred percent. Um. So yeah, I mean, they, you can't go wrong with that. So obviously that's on Disc 1 of Garage Inc., <clears throat> produced by Bob Rock. Um, all right, number two, number one. Here we go. Mm, I, I want to guess the number one, but let, let's hear number two. Okay. <laughs> My number two, Am I Evil? Nice. By Diamond Head. <laughs> He said, "Creeping Death" also on the re-release of Kill 'Em All. I mean, dude, it's it's a Metallica song now. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Diamond Head is 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 obviously cool, but it's a Metallica song. I mean, that's the one they came out together with at the Big Four show, and everyone played together, and they had like thirty thousand snare drums on stage for the intro, <laughs> and you know, every, you know, everybody but like Slayer was up there because they were too cool, and you know, I saw a, a, an interesting tuning room recently at, when they, the boys were in Europe and they were rehearsing Confusion. And I've always thought the intro to Confusion sounded like "Am I Evil," and yeah. Lars actually admits it because I think they're you know they're doing a cover slot over in Europe. So right. he was like, "Wait, is this that 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 that?" So, wait, did we? Damn it, we ripped him off, and it's already out. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah, but I mean, I, I really think you know I'll put my foot down. I mean, this is a Metallica song now. They've 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 not only made it their own; they, it's adapted put into. Put your foot down, dude. Both of them are literally put, on your put floor your right feet now. Down. <laughs> both of them are down. Damn it. But they, so have, let it they, be they have they have made it their own. I mean, if if they play it at any of their shows, I, no one in the crowd is going, "Oh, cool, this cover song." They're like, right. "No, it's fucking Am I Evil." It's become a, just a part of their whole deal. Yeah, and I love it, man. Yeah. Can't go wrong. All right, you want to guess my number one? I was gonna guess Am I Evil for your number one. Okay. Um, dang. Um, can you give me a hint? No, don't give me a crazy hint. Just get, steer me in the direction. Steer you in the direction. Yeah. In this song, James James changed. Uh, let's see, two times I think he changed uh, the original word to f- to fuck. Ooh, I don't know. Dun, ding, dun, 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 dun. I don't know. Stone Cold Crazy. Oh by shit. Queen. So I will say, Am I Evil and Stone Cold Crazy were like flip flopping all morning. I was gonna guess Am I Evil for your number one, and I was like, then I heard Stone Cold Crazy again, and I kept listening to it. And I was like, damn it, this is good. They did such a good job on this cover. It's so heavy. It's 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 the original. Minus yeah. a couple of lyric changes. Did, yeah, right. But I mean, and there's just a cool history behind it. You know, it was on originally it was on the Electro's 40th anniversary compilation. Then it appeared as the B side to Enter Sandman, um, that other deep cut we we're talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Enter what? Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember I first heard it when I bought the Inner Sandman Cassingle. 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 Um, and I and and I didn't really I knew who Queen was. I, I knew who Queen was. Uh, but I bought when I bought I was at the deli by uh, getting a lettuce sandwich, and uh, when I got the Cassingle, I knew what it was, but uh, I hadn't heard of it, and and I love it. Now I do. <laughs> but, you know, it was one of those things, like, I knew who Queen was because of my dad and stuff like that. And But I only really knew, like, the big songs, Bohemian Rhapsody and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. when I heard this, I was like, oh, this is such a fucking bitchin' song. And I remember, like, showing it to my dad. And he's like, oh, it's a Queen song. Mm-hmm. I was like, really? 
Queen wrote that and blew me away. And that's that's almost the point of covers for a band as big as Metallica is you're paying tribute to bands that inspired you. Yeah. But so many kids like you are like getting turned on to that shit because yep. Metallica did it. And it made it made me like dive into Queen more too. Right. You know, so. which I'm a massive Queen fan. Yeah, Queen's great. One of the greatest bands of all time. Uh, the Adam Lambert version, of course. <laughs> Post American Idol for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Jeez. Freddie Freddie Kirkery, no thank you. Yeah, what? Yeah, what is Freddie name? Mercuricom. What uh, is it? Teddy Saturn. Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so good. yeah, there you go. I'll do I'll do a quick little rundown, then we'll get into Clint's top ten. Number ten, Merciful Fate. Number nine, Bread Fan. Number eight, Remember Tomorrow. Number seven, Last Caress. Number six, Helpless. Number five, Blitzkrieg. Number four, The Prince. Number three, Die, Die, My Darling. Number two, Am I Evil? And number one, Stone Cold Crazy. We have two overlaps. And two overlaps, <clears> okay. Our lists are pretty different. Oh. Oh, you have an honorable mention? Do we do our honorable mention now, or do we do them after let's, yours? Let's do them after. Okay. Let's do yeah. our honorable mentions later. Okay. It's like another Christmas gift. I want to get to me. This is like a stocking stuffer for Aww. the end. Yeah. I, love to- I love how Christmassy this episode is. Oh, we're doing a Christmas episode. Don't worry. Oh. I don't know what it's going to be, but... We're gonna do, we're gonna do it from our the top of our fucking chimney. All it really means is we're gonna do a normal episode, and you're just gonna hear sleigh bells going the whole ching, time ching, for ching, two ching, hours. Ching, ching. <laughs> um, yeah, our lists are pretty different. Um, All right, let's check yours out. My number ten uh, is the song "Astronomy." Really, Blue Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster Cult. That song is so trippy and cool. It and is cool. Weird. There's, and uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a sucker for the for the Bob Rock production. Um, yeah. Several of my choices did come from Garage. Yeah, Inc. that that was a. I made like a list of probably 15 to 16 songs, and then kind of whittled it down. And Astronomy was in there originally. Just that really creepy. Hey, in the chorus. I'm your life. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm the one who takes bread fan. <laughs> uh, there's real, and you know, Jason sounds great on these recordings too. There's great guitar interplay between the bass yeah. and the guitar. They all kind of finish that phrase together. And I'm not a huge Blue Usher Cult guy. I, I've never Don't really. Fear the Reaper. I know that one. That's it. You know, Burning for You. Oh, Burning for You. That's a great song. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning, burning for, for you. Cruise. For Cruise. For Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, or Com Cruise. Com Cruise, or for a cruise to the. Canary, Canary Islands. Islands, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, cool. I almost said Parrot Islands. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which that probably exists somewhere, The too. Bird Islands, yeah. yeah. I have not gone to the, the Bird or the Parrot Islands. I've been to either. the uh, Pigeon Islands. Uh, will you give me a million dollars? So astronomy is my number 10. Number nine, the small hours. This is good. It is one of the heaviest, creepiest songs I've ever recorded. It's just got a great groove. It's really creepy. I don't know what he's talking about. It's the Holocaust cover. Yeah. Uh, and I try to get through to you. Dun, 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 dun. Great solo too. I mean, I, I think I think that um, we have a great document of Kirk kicking ass on that whole EP, the oh, Five Nine yeah, EP. Sure. He he shines so much on that EP. It's just right there in that Justice era when he was just on fire, technically. Yeah, you're right in between puppets and justice, yeah. and yeah, he was at the top of his game for sure. So that's my number nine. My my number eight, I mean, some people might think this is lame, but I picked Turn the Page, dude. On a long, lonesome highway that was tough to leave off it they, there is so much Dude, that's so fucking that, that's obvious why would you choose that you're not a real Metallica fan 
Yeah! Like, they play it all the time, and, like, it's stupid. Bob Seger sucks. I mean, there's so much swagger in this performance. The sl- Kirk taking that saxophone part and putting it in that eerie slide. Yeah, that's great. That's one of my favorite parts of the song. And the, the lyric just really seeming to resonate with them as a touring band. Yep. I mean, I, I just think they knocked it out of the fucking park. They did. Uh, when I went to that show, when I was in Australia, my first Metallica show ever. Australia. Australia. Yeah, mate. Say we were walking backstage, right? <laughs> Sorry, you're taking a drink as I did that. <laughs> I almost spit it out on my <laughs> microphone. <laughs> no, but uh, so when we were being escorted back to this like Metalla lounge, kind of hang out and get some drinks and to stuff. To Metalla hang? The Metalla hang. I was getting some Metallica beverages. And anyways, we walked past the tuning room while they were in there, mm-hmm. and they were rehearsing "Turn the Page." No shit. Yeah, uh, they're on that kind of um, acts of. They, they don't use amps in there, do they? Or did they now, at that time? I don't think they oh, do. They're on, they're, on, they're on fractals. They're all on fractals now. Yeah, so I, I would imagine those but, were in the tuning room as well. But you could hear it. You could hear them playing. Oh it. yeah, yeah. It was, it was totally loud. Like, it sounded like a garage band playing. Oh really? It so, was cool. Yeah. So must, oh, you know what? They do have wedges in there. Yeah, they, they have wedges. They, well, at the time too. I mean, they, I mean, there was cabinets and stuff. So they're playing. Like, oh okay. Because this, like, this was like oh eight. This would have been oh nine. Oh okay. nine. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was on the Death Magnetic, Magnetic tour and. The security guard that was that was who I've seen in other videos, and I think I, I saw a clip of him even in through the Never. Same dude. He Ooh. just looks like a giant piece of stone, <laughs> and um, he really does. But he actually stopped us. He's like, "Hey, check this out. I'm a stone." And he's like, "Listen." And we listened. And it was like, "Oh, they're playing Turn the Page." He's like, "Yeah, that's the tuning room. They're in the warming up right now." Wow! I was like, Holy shit, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah. James's voice sounds great on it. They just. I don't know. They they took a song. This is one of the one of the few songs that I do think the original is just as good, if not better. But the original Bob Seger recording is just yeah, fucking you, you can't classic. really fuck with it. But I mean, are they, but, but they hearing that, them. but hearing the Metallica flavor on it, yep, the heavy guitars, James's vocal. I love his vocal at the end, going up Out an octave there in higher. The spotlight, in my yeah. Life. On the road again. Um. <clears throat> all right, that's my number eight. My number seven. It's electric. Diamond Head cover. Yeah, it's a good one. Just a great rocker. It is, yeah. James's vocal sounds great. It's not remarkable, but it's just it sounds great. It's crazy that they, they named that song after Lars's radio show. Yeah, because they, yeah. they just put out Garage Inc. like it's two days ago. So I think. weird. Yeah. yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Um, my number six, another Diamond Head cover, and your number two pick, Am I Evil? Really? Okay. It made my list. Um, it's not as high as yours, but it did yeah. make my list. Definitely not as high as mine, bro. I'm so <laughs> fucked up <laughs> Fuck on <yeah>. wacky weed. <laughs> hey, get some of that good vibes. Uh, positive vibes. Or positive vibes. Instant yeah, man. Stuff. I can't believe I didn't like that before we started. That's okay. Maybe that's why the vibes are so low on this episode. Yeah, I feel like the, the, there's no positive vibes happening this right now. This episode is fucked up. Sorry, guys. Uh, we talked about Am I Evil. It's, it's classic Metallica. What it can is, we say? yeah. Number five, another one that might disappoint people is similar to Turn the Page. I went straight at Whiskey in the Jar, dude. Yeah, there you go. I think that, that was close for me too. The way he delivers that vocal has so much character, and I I, be, I, I know he didn't write it, and I know he, I think he gets some of the words wrong. He's been criticized for that. Yeah, but I believe it, and it's 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 an oddly touching song. I I don't know. It is, yeah. Um, he's talking about Molly, and you know he he loves sleeping in Molly's chamber, but he's in prison. And, yeah. I don't know. It, it captures something really special. Maybe it's because I was young when I got into it. Yeah. I love the video where they're at that house. Yep, the video's great. I, I I have always thought that like it's a bummer for Kirk because James does all the solos. <laughs> By the way, how did that solo not make our top ten solos, dude? James fucking murders that. I know, that. it's good, it's good. But Kirk just has to play chords for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, he, he's like, ow. It hurts to do this the whole time. Ow. Ow. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope when Kirk ever gets like a splinter or like does something where he kind of hurts, he does it like a like a 
toddler. Ow! Uh. His guitar tech just did a um, a so what interview yeah. with that Stefan cat, and uh, obviously they're being really sweet about. It, he, they interviewed all the techs ex- yeah, yeah. except for Rob's tech. Rob's tech was not wanting to do it, but they talked oh, to Lars' drum tech and um, James's tech and, and uh, Kirk's tech, and he they were like, "What's you know what's it like working with Kirk?" And he was like, "Man, Kirk is so funny because we'll literally be walking to the deck." Like the lights are out, Ecstasy of Gold's playing. They're about to walk on stage and start their show, and they'll be like, "Hey, man, do you have any nail clippers? <laughs> I need to clip my nails." As the intro music, yes, started. that's amazing. <laughs> All right, uh, whiskey in the jar. What can I say? It's great. Number four, Sabracadabra. Sabbath Bloody Sabbath is my favorite Sabbath record. Sure. And uh, and they actually, they're not credited for it, but it, it, they do a national acrobat too. It's it's kind of a medley of two songs yeah. that are back to back on Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. But love it, dude. I would say it's a little bit of a curveball. I mean. I mean, to me, it's not like one of Metallica's well-known covers. You yeah. Know? The, what's really interesting is that in, natural, uh, <laughs> in national acrobat, uh, there's a riff that sounds like Fade to Black. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if they lifted it from that or what. Hey, but, they, might, they might have. Um, and you know what? That's fine. But it's just got a great riff. I love hearing James sort of approximate Ozzy. It, yeah. It's just a treat. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. That's my number four. Number three. This is high on, higher on my list than yours. I went at Last Caress Green Hell. Okay, cool. I fucking love it. Oh, they kill it. I love it. I mean, it's like you talked about earlier about how Metallica will cover bands in order for people to like, hey, check out our influences. This is what made mm-hmm. us as a band. This exact cover is the reason I I knew who the Misfits and were. And you're a huge Misfits fan. Yeah, now. I love the Misfits Like now. you do tribute nights and stuff, right? I have, yeah. I have, I have a very, very part-time, like every couple of years, Mis- Misfits cover band um, called Middle Ages from Mars. Do you do Last Caress and Green Hell? Yeah. We don't. We haven't done Green Hell. We do Last Caress. Uh, it's real fun. We've only we've only done two shows, and both of them have been on Halloween. Nice. Yeah. Because well, they're kind of the horror movie. They're, they're a horror punk band. Horror punk band. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my number two is probably my biggest curveball, and okay. uh, it almost made my number one. Really? I'm curious. When a blind man cries. The Deep Purple cover that was on their tribute to the Deep Purple record Machine Head, which I have on vinyl in there, which maybe listen to that later. But um, I just think it's a ballad. It's a slow tune. Yeah, it's it's brooding. It's got some of the coolest guitar playing, I think, ever on Metallica records. It's got it's a one great of my, solo. Yeah, it's one of my favorite moments on on disc <clears throat> or the uh, bonus disc stuff three yeah. on disc three on a uh, hardwired. But if you leave it. Close the door. It's just great, and then the the he does the first chorus kind of mid range, and then he yeah. goes way up for the last yeah, chorus. Cool. It's just it's one of my favorite. Like that would make a top ten in general for me right now. Right, yeah. It's just the ride I'm on right now. Yeah, I listen to When a Blind Man Cries several times a day. Dude, I, love, awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's a great song. Do you want to take a guess what my number one is? Did you look at my list earlier when no, I was showing it to you? No, All right. no. Do you, do you know what? Do you have an idea what it is? Well, uh, you said we had two that overlapped, and we've, we've already done. Oh no. Okay, but you still don't know what it is. No, but we've. We overlapped Am I Evil mm-hmm. and Last Caress. And Last Caress. We only had two overlaps, right? Or do we have three? Uh, you need to guess what this number oh, one shit. is. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there that are, we have another overlap and it's Stone Cold Crazy. No. No? Stone Cold Crazy. I don't like that song. Really? I, I'm sad to say that to you because I know it was your number sad one. Sad but true. Jeez. I'm sad to say it. I don't like it. 
I don't like Queen's version either, and I love Queen. Wow, okay. I know, I'm sorry. This, this is really going to affect our friendship. It's... <laughs> The and that was episode 53. Like, oh, welcome to Melbourne Podcast or whatever. I'm Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like goth emo Ethan. Yeah. Uh, well, my dad made me... I had to go to bed before midnight last yeah, night. Yeah, like, welcome to the show or something. Well, whatever, I guess. I don't know, it's fine. What do you, I, don't, what do you want, I don't care what you want to talk about. I don't care. It's up to you. I don't, it's fine. You sound like me when I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Mom, I just want to listen to The Cure. Dude, my number one all-time favorite Metallica cover song is Bread Fan. Bread fan. Love it. Even though you don't know the lyrics. Don't know don't need to know them. That's how good it is. Bread fan. What was that side of a song different side? Don't lift those shoes there. And and another unpopular opinion about my favorite cover is I actually like when they do it live and they leave out the middle part. I like the short okay, and yeah. sweet version. Yeah, the short and sweet version is cool. Like on the the Webster Hall vinyl that just came out, that he's like, "Hey, before we get started, bound it, bound it, and just plays that riff. Yeah, it's pretty bitching. That great Hetfield. Tone. I like when they open with a cover here and there. They've done Bread Fan quite a bit. Yeah, like I mean, as an opening slot. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, the, uh, Cunning Stunts opened with So What. And yeah, I'm surprised So What didn't make either of our lists. Yeah. That again, that was another another very close one. Speaking of that, so let's, what's your? You have, I only have one honorable honorable mention. I, I, uh, you can is, read several. I'll, I'll explain. It's here. our show. We can do whatever we want. So it, it is technically a, one track, but my honorable mention that it was so close to making this list, the closest next to the top ten, was their medley from "This Is Your Life," the Ronnie James Dio tribute. Yeah, the and Ronnie Rising light, medley. Yeah, "Light in the Black," "Terror Woman," "Stargazer," and and "Kill the King." Yeah, it's fucking badass. I like it. It's so good. And I realized when I was listening to it that I mean I, I haven't heard I haven't listened to those songs that many times. I haven't either. So like today I I was just like finalizing this list and I went through it and I listened to it a few times. I was like, damn it, this needs to be on my phone so whenever in my car I can listen to it because it's it rips, dude. That I like I I like that the disc three of Hardwired's <coughs> represented in these lists today because I wasn't that familiar with it a few I guess a month ago. But remember tomorrow is on mm-hmm. your list. Yeah. You got the Ronnie Rising medley. Yeah. When a blind man cries is my second favorite. So we had three overlaps. We had Am I Evil, um, Bread Fan, and Last Caress. And Last Caress. Although you did not include Green Hell, and I included Green Hell. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Touch it. That's no. technically an eleventh song, and if you, you know. No, dude. No. I don't know. I think. Are you counting? Because I have Saber Cadabra and National Acrobat. Yeah, that's true. Come on. Although I, my honorable mention did have four songs. And your merciful so. fate song is eleven. Minutes eleven long. minutes. Yeah. Uh, it's like if you do a. a um, uh, what the, I'm blanking on the band. Uh, In a God in a Vita, Iron yeah. Butterfly, Iron top Butterfly. ten. Yeah, uh, Iron Butterfly, number one. <laughs> or uh, In a God In a God in a Vita. Right, exactly. Like, cool. It's like twenty five thousand minutes right. long. Or like Pink Floyd Echoes, yeah. side B of metal. Um, my number six for this Rush list is uh, side A of twenty one twelve. I never was a big into Rush. I went through a Rush phase for about two years. Was it's, it a Was it a sex list two years? Hmm. I don't. I don't, I don't do any whatever. Rush fans I don't have want to sex? Talk, talk about that right now. It's cool <laughs> or whatever. Like it's just it's a phase. Yeah. Look, I looked at pornography. I listened to Rush. That's all I did. Uh, and I did go through a short phase. I went to go see him at the Pond in Anaheim, which is now the Honda Center, mm. with Candlebox opening. Oh my God! Uh, it was the first time I smelled weed. That made you bad. Didn't mean to treat you oh so bad. I probably know all the words to that song. My wife loves Candlebox. I don't. I, I can't say current candle box. You see the look of shock on my face. <laughs> Is there anyone who loves candle? Box? My wife has like made like a '90s playlist, and like there's multiple candle box songs represented. Does but, she listen to Far Behind and cry? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> there's Far Behind, and then what was the other one? Um, you? Or, yeah. Uh, oh, you. Yeah. And I buy for you, and I don't die It's just for a bunch you. of things he would do for you. But am I holding it? They were kind of like an but, early version of like uh, Three Doors Down to me. Totally. But I they mean, they had a third single too called "Cover You" or yeah. "Cover Me." Dude had a, a much better voice though than the the guy from Three Doors Down. When Allison Chains had to cancel opening for Metallica because of Lane Staley's drug problems, they replaced them with uh, Candlebox. And I can imagine how bummed I would have been. I did. I mean, I remember the, like, this this show I saw was in like 94. And I do remember the time. I was like a sophomore in high school. I remember liking Candlebox at the time. Oh, lo- I'm had, like, this I had is that cool. record. I still think that record is good. And they had another one after that. Uh, the girl with the little mask on, I think. I can't remember the I name of it. I kind of lost touch with them after that. But anyways. It's just say, very of its time. It's very 90s. It's very 90s. Especially like the, the tones, the snare sound, all that stuff. All I have to say, yes, I went through a rush phase. 
So much so that I still have a little special special place in my heart for a few Rush records. Mm. Don't play them hardly all, at all, but if fucking YYZ comes on in the car and I'm listening to Lightning 100 or something. Yeah, I'm pulling over, homie. Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, I'll crash my car if I listen to that you know, while I'm driving. I mean, I'm well aware of how of the musical prowess of the three members of Rush and have utmost respect for sure, yeah. all that they've done. I think they're a great force in rock and roll. They did shit their, on their own terms. Yeah. Uh, I just, it just never, I never got bit by the Rush Have bug. you seen the Rush documentary? No, it's in my queue. It's fucking awesome. Even if you don't like Rush, it's re- it's just a great music yeah. documentary. It's in my queue. I got it queued up. Well, fucking put that at the top of your list and watch it tonight. My honorable mention is The More I See, the Discharge cover. From Ooh, Rush that's a good Days. one. It's yeah. Just, I just love how heavy it is. There's this cool delay on the guitars that reminds me of Devil's Dance. Yeah. Which Tom, by the way, just recently put out his Devil's Dance episode. How's Shocker. He, how's he surprise, feeling? surprise. He shit on it the whole time. Tom. Man. Come on, Riddler. I love Devil's Dance. Come on, Riddler. <laughs> he's the villain. He's the po- he's the Metallica podcast villain. But he's kind of the villain, you, the lovable villain. Yeah, he's a villain that you occasionally have to team up with, you know, just to, to get something good accomplished right. for the greater good. Right. But in general, yeah, it's like, yeah, Tom is definitely our, uh, our Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you I'd have say, it. You know, I'd say he's more of the Joker. Let's, let's make this official because... You know, he, he he has his negative opinions on things, but you can also laugh with them. I guess the Riddler is that way, too. <laughs> I don't know. I'm over I love how much now. thought you're putting into this. Could he be the penguin? Ooh. Mm. I'm not sure. You know, he's poison ivy. <laughs> is he Mr. Freeze? <laughs> he's Mr. Chill. Chill. Uh, well, there we did it. We did our top tens. Uh, if you guys want to write in and let us know what your top tens are, yeah, I'd be interested to see that list. Yeah, for sure. I would love to. Um, I'd imagine a lot of old school fans will have a, a list similar to mine. But um, yeah, I would love to hear what other people's top ten cover songs are. Maybe throw in an honorable mention in there. Um, and if you haven't heard, I mean, I, clearly, if you're listening to this podcast, you surely have Garage Inc. And or Garage Days Revisited. So you've heard most of these songs. But if you haven't heard like the Dio stuff, the Maiden thing, go check that shit out. The Ramon, there's even Ramon stuff. I didn't lo- love it, but it's still cool they cover the Ramones. Like Crete and Hop and shit. Crete and Hop, they, yeah, they did Commando, 53rd and 3rd. Mm-hmm. Um, and those ended up being uh, being released during uh, San Anger. And there's all the Motorhead covers that were, that were on the uh, Hero of the Day yeah. uh, single. Yeah, so write us in, show at gmail.com. And let us know. Yeah, and go check out that iTunes review. All you got to do is leave us a positive review. Um, I'm very diligent about it. I check it. Um, uh, before we draw the names, I make sure that we're current. We have all the all the current names in the pot for the drawing. Uh, it's a way for us to give back to the show and for you to help us grow. I don't know why, but the, the, the reviews help us become more visible through the algorithms of iTunes. It's really helpful. Go check out the Patreon. Consider getting on the ride with us at that level. It's basically sacrificing two cups of coffee a week. Um or if you just pledge a dollar, shit, that's just a cup. That's one cup of coffee. Where? <laughs> well, I don't know. How much is coffee? Uh, I don't know. If you go to like, I mean, Starbucks, a, a, a small or a tall, excuse me, a tall would probably be like two bucks. I don't know. Two fifty. I don't know. You I go, make my own shitty coffee. You go to like fancy, house. you know, barista parlor or one of the cool shops in town here. It's going to be like six bucks for something. But. Every co-write I do, I tell the people who haven't written with me before and they come to my studio to write. I'm like, hey, if you're like a coffee person, like capital C yeah maybe get some coffee on the way yeah. I'll have a pot of coffee yeah, but, but, it's, but it's, it's Folgers it's yeah. it's Maxwell House <laughs> <laughs> Maxwell House <laughs> do you save the, the containers after for like your change and stuff like that no no sure don't I, I, I recycle and or throw them away they're good for uh, for, for storage <laughs> I have a, I have I have a, a, a actually a, a tin a Cafe Du Monde from New Orleans yeah on my desk and that's where all my change goes in and once it fills up I go to the old Kroger I put it in the Coinstar machine, and I get me some dollars. And get you some uh, spending money. Get you some pocket. Then money. I go buy like eight bottles of Tapatio, and I'm set. Tapatio, mm. Topa Chico. I see. I do speak Spanish. Tapatio. Yeah. <laughs> Topa Chico. Depeche mode. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the episode, guys. <laughs> We're gonna end on top talking about Tapatio and Depeche mode. Uh, that was fun. It was fun. Uh, we're gonna have man. We're, so these we're gonna do these compilation episodes. So I've been making them with the help of a lot of our fans. It's going to be so fun and so funny. It's probably going to be a two-parter. We're going to just find a way to sort of cap off the year and make it special. And then 2018 is going to be fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. It's going to be really cool. We don't know what we're doing, but it's going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have, we, we, have, we have grand plans and things you know, we need to you know, put into place and, and get things sorted out. But we do have some really cool ideas for next year. And uh, 
yeah, please continue on the ride with us into 2018. Yeah, and thanks to everyone for listening. We really appreciate it. And with that, we'll just get the fuck out of here and I'll say peace. Adios. <laughs> Advice or what would you say? Then I would say, delete that. <laughs> <laughs>